After weeks of development and 50 whopping dollars later, it is finally here. This is our tribute to the Internet of All Things. This is the Raspberry Pi powered mains project and you can plug any electrical device into this and control it from your tablet, phone, or computer anywhere in the world. Let me show you how it works. Power on! This is my grandfather's antique Niagara Falls light. How cool is that? Let's do another one. Power on! A dust lamp. Let's go again. Power on! In case you're warm, I can turn on the fan. And one more. Power on. The light. So you can see it's very easy to use. And again, I can turn these devices on in the same room or anywhere in the world using my tablet, phone, or computer. I'll put the playlist down below. This build took three videos to make. And if you want to make your own, let me know. And I'll put the schematics and the 3D plans in the description. And you can download it. So let's get started with the build. This is my plan for hooking up AC mains to my Raspberry Pi box. I wanted to show you how I plan to do it. This is actually the right way. Because we're going to be powering different devices off these plugs, you have to make sure that it's wired properly with respect to hot neutral and make sure you make your grounds. So we're talking about these. These are represented here. And then we have our four relays. And then we have our AC 120 volt mains coming in. I'm going to use a red pen for the hot. Blue is neutral and the ground will be green. Now, as we talked about before, there's a hot and neutral on each one of the plugs. And generally, the black wire is hot and the white is neutral. So we're going to start with neutral. And when you're switching, you should always switch the hot and not the neutral. So with that said, what we're going to do is take our blue pen and we're going to go ahead and connect all our neutrals together. So I can easily do that just by taking this and connecting here, jump right over like this, making sure that I'm on the right side of that receptacle. I have all my neutrals together like that. Okay, so each one of these plugs is getting neutral from AC mains. Now let me switch over to my red, which is the hot. And the hot, what we're gonna do is we're gonna run it up to one leg of our relay, just like that. And we're going to share this connection as well on each one of these legs, just like that. And then because this is relay one and this is outlet one, we're going to go ahead and continue to run this up to here like this. I'll explain in a minute. So if we do this, then each one of these plugs is getting hot neutral. So if we were talking about outlet three here, the hot comes up, it continues over, it's coming into relay three. Now if this relay were open, the electricity would stop right there. It's just a switch. It couldn't go any further. But once this relay is closed, then the electricity, the hot, can continue on up to our receptacle, which is on the hot side. And then as you can see, it's also supplied with our neutral because it comes down to here. So this plug would be activated. And there's one thing missing off here, and that is our ground. And each one, and we must ground, you know, each one of these outlets has a ground. Now, if you're talking about a light bulb or something like that, you really don't need ground. But again, we don't know what's going to be plugged into these. So it's always good to run a ground. It's necessary. So with our ground wire here, we can just make sure that we're grounding here as well on each one of these. So that's it. So I thought I'd go ahead and talk about the receptacles and our plugs a little bit because, you know, the neutral and hot are so important. 
and I know a lot of you veterans already know this, but it doesn't hurt to touch on it. So as most know, on a normal North America plug, we have our hot, our neutral, and our ground. And the ground's always round. Most people know that, that this is earth ground here. The small blade, this one here, is the hot, okay? And this one here is our neutral, which is always is also sort of like a ground. And then on the side here, there's a ground screw, and that covers the metal as well, this metal as well as this hole here, okay? And then the, the screws are marked on if they're, you know, this side's hot or neutral or either or, there's a marking. It's too small to see, but uh, it's there. So I mentioned that this project, it's pretty necessary that we use our grounds. And that's because we don't know what's going to be plugged into this thing. And if somebody plugs in something that requires a ground and we don't have it with a plug such as this, it's uh, not going to be safe. Now... Let's talk about how we can figure it out if we don't know. If we bear these wires, you can see I've bared the wires on this two-prong plug. If we plug this into here, as I said before, the long one is our neutral. This one here is the hot. We could always use an ohms meter, you know, and check our long one or our short one to make to double check that so we know which way to wire it. Let's go ahead and do that real quick just for giggles. So because we know that our long and fat one is neutral, we can take our ohms meter, put it on continuity test, and we can test that one right there is our neutral because it's connecting, whereas this one is not. And then over here, our hot is the one with the tape on it, and that's why I did that. I actually marked this ahead of time. Now, if neither one of the plugs was wide, then you'd have a really old plug, and I'd recommend not using it at all, okay? Anyway, that's a quick lesson on how to identify hot and neutral. Now, you might be thinking that because the ground and the neutral both go to ground, that they would be connected on here physically. And I can tell you that they're not. If you come up here and you go into your neutral and then you go to your ground, you can see they're not connected these are because they're both ground but uh, on the ground screw the ground screw does go to the center as expected in the case but um, I've seen where people think well I don't need a three prong plug because the neutral will take care of it but as you can see that is not connected at all So there you have it. So after all that stuff I showed you about hot and neutral, I figured I'd go ahead and show you on a live box. And this is a receptacle here in the shop. And sometimes these receptacles can be wired wrong. Now from what I told you earlier, the small slot is our hot. The longer, wider one is our neutral. And then of course the ground is the round one. And you can actually buy those neon testers and plug it in and figure out if you're wired correctly but you can do it with a multimeter as well and it's easy to do all you do is set it up on voltage test and i have mine set on ac volts and you want it set at least on 120 i've got mine set on 200 and then take your leads it doesn't matter which and stick one of them in the ground plug just like that okay and then you want to take your other lead and stick it in one of these slots and wait for a reaction from your meter. You can tell I don't have nothing there. Let's put it in the other one. 
and there is my 122 21 volts so that tells me that this side that I have my prong in right now is my hot side and this side over here is my neutral so this plug is wired correctly and again you can do this method and check your own plugs and make sure you're wired correctly I've seen a lot of them where they're not especially in older houses I was trying to find a suitable power cable that I could use for my project you can see by the end of this one that's quite a bit older but it still has the ground and this was actually a computer cable you know for the power supply and as I was bearing back the wires, I started with this one first. I noticed how thin they looked. The insulation was wimpy, and it didn't look like it had much copper. It's 18 gauge is what it said on the side. So then I found this older plug, and it's much beefier. And hopefully you can see the difference there. So this, this one is much beefier and it's got a lot more insulation and I swear it looks like it's got more copper too. So which one would you use? Yep, that's what I thought too. On with it. So something that I forgot to do was to add power for my fan. So this is my 12 volt fan and uh, I had to come back and just add a couple pins here. So that's done. I can plug in my fan. Let's go ahead and touch on the software that we use to connect our Android devices to the Pi itself. We went the easy route for now and we just downloaded an app out of the Google Play Store. It's this one, it's called GPIO Tools for the Raspberry Pi and it's a free version. They also have one for $2 that allows a little more but the one we're using right now is for free. And like you've seen in the demo, it's very simple and basic. It shows you your pins on the Raspberry Pi and if they're high or low, and you can press them and turn them high or low, you know. It doesn't have scheduling or anything like that, but it's, uh, it works well and it, it responds well. And again, it's free. Now we plan to use this for now until our custom app is made. And my boy Steve is actually developing that for us he's been busy so he hasn't had a lot of time to devote to that but when the app is ready i'll share that with you in a future episode but this app also works with some adafruit stuff that uh, is out like the lcd plate and they have a temperature sensor and they have a couple hats that uh, 
Pi Face here. So this software does work well. Now this will work only internally within your local area network. If you want to use this with the web and you know use it anywhere in the world, you need to use this in conjunction with another piece of software for remote managed network. And the one that I found that I like is called Weaved. It uh, allows you to connect um, across the internet with no port forwarding and no complex network setup. And it works through any TCP IP device, basically. It's very easy to use and it keeps track of your IP so you don't need a static IP address or anything like that. And the setup's super quick. So these are a couple solutions to use your Raspberry Pi anywhere in the world. Now there are a lot of other choices and ways that you can do it, but these are the two easiest that I found that uh, require very little knowledge as far as programming. So I hope you enjoyed this series on the Raspberry Pi powered relay system. I think this is a pretty useful device. Some things that I look back on now that I wish I would have changed or done differently. The case itself is a little small for as much stuff's in there. I mean for the Pi and the board it's not bad and the fan. But once you start adding outlets and all the thicker wiring that you need, it gets a little packed in there, you know, and it's a little hard to work on. So it would have been better if I would have made a little bit bigger case. Other than that, I'm pretty satisfied. If I was to do this again, I would put more uh, access to the different ports on the Pi so I could plug in the HDMI and things like that. But this is a prototype, so it doesn't bother me that much. And as far as the software, like I said before, once the final software is done, I'll share that with you in a future episode. And overall, it's been a good experience, but I got to tell you, I'm, I'm glad it's done and I'm ready to go on to something else, you know. After a while, you just get tired of stuff and you're just ready to move on. So anyway, we'll mount this to the wall and we'll use it. And again, look for the playlist in the description to this video. And we'll see you next time. Bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.